From the nation's capital here in Washington, D.C., this is Big East Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. Today, the Butler Bulldogs visit the Georgetown Hoyas. And welcome everybody courtside here at McDonough Arena alongside the associate head coach of the WNBA champion Washington Mystics, Eric Tebow. I'm Ben Gordon Goldstein. And Erica, matchup today of a couple of teams really going in different directions. Georgetown comes into this game three straight losses. But on the other side, Butler, back-to-back -back wins and a really impressive game against Villanova on Friday. They did a great job defensively against a tough Villanova team to guard. Uh, dominated on the rebounding front and got helped Villanova to 41 points on the offensive end. And we like to take a look at the standings here in the Big East Conference and see Georgetown there. Three straight losses, so one and four. But Butler really playing well right now. They're 2-2 two and two in conference. And then right now DePaul at the top, 4-0 in conference play. So we look at the matchup today yeah, between like Butler right and Georgetown now. And Georgetown, a little struggle offensively so far this season, but really the key for both teams, rebounding. Rebounding has been the big difference for Butler. They're 9-0 when they out-rebound their opponents. 50, off, uh, 50 boards against Villanova really controlled the game through their rebounding. And Butler 7-0 and when they hold opponents under 60 points. As we look at the key players in today's game, starting first with Butler, Genesis Parker really playing well right now. Genesis Parker, a lefty guard, a transfer from Cincinnati, has ability to create off the dribble and leads the team in three-point shooting. Nearly 12 points a game for her to assist, 2.7 rebounds per game. And on the other side, Nikola Kovacikova, the sophomore there for Georgetown, really one of the only rare bright spots in that Xavier game. She's finding a rhythm offensively. She's really shooting the ball well in conference play led them in scoring against Xavier, and she can be a big factor off the bench for Georgetown. 14 points in that Xavier game. Good outside threat as well. 7.3 points per game for Kovacikova. Butler, Georgetown, starters and the tip coming up next. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power gun. And welcome back to McDonough Arena, getting set for the opening tip here between Georgetown and Butler as we take a look at the starting lineups. And first, for the Butler Bulldogs, we had highlighted Genesis Parker there in the open, but Kristen Spolier is really the key here for this Butler team. Spolier's got kind of an old, old school game. Spolier with an old school game, a big guard who can post up. She can shoot the three. Her left-handed game kind of throws people off defensively. So Butler wins the opening tip, and we are underway here between Georgetown and Butler. Georgetown three straight losses coming into this game. Butler with back-to-back -back loss, with back-to-back -back wins rather, coming into this one really impressive win against Villanova. Georgetown starting with a little bit of zone here, more zone than they've played in past games. Without Butler's ability to really stretch the ball from three, we may see more of this from Georgetown today. And an early miss there by Butler, but they clean up the offensive glass and a put back up and in, and Butler has the early lead on a Torre bucket. Brianna Jones there. Over into the corner to Caleb uh, Barnes with the shot, and that one is up and good, a three-pointer there for a Georgetown team that really does not hit many three-pointers. That was a big key for Jamie How uh, Jimmy Howard, Taylor Barnes, not as aggressive as she normally is against Xavier the other day. The fact that she's looking out uh, looking to fire right off the bat is a good sign. As we look at the keys here for Georgetown in this game, we talked to their head coach James Franklin, or James Howard rather, earlier in the game as Butler Get the bucket up and in and the foul. Not what Georgetown wants to do, putting this Butler team on the line. They live on getting to the foul line. Spolier herself is leading the Big East in free throw attempts, and Butler as a whole relies on those points at the foul line to score. 
And so when we were talking to James Howard before the game, that was one of the things he talked about, limiting free throw opportunities and here an early free throw. The other thing that he really highlighted was limiting turnovers as well, not letting Butler push it on transition. Georgetown, for the most part of the season, has done a good job taking care of the ball, less so in conference play. They've got to get back to getting quality possessions on the offensive end of the floor. Here's Kalova inside. A little handoff there to Bennett, who's been playing more recently. Her ninth straight start for the freshman. And Barnes really the key for this team driving in. Misses the layup. Butler trying to clean up the defensive glass, and it's Spolier who will pitch the other way. Spolier will kick it outside. Strong will take the three-pointer. That's off the back iron, tipped around, and it'll go... Butler's way, they'll keep it on the team rebound there. So Georgetown not able to clean up the defensive glass there, and Butler will get another second chance opportunity. We see Catherine Strong coming out firing today for Butler. Hasn't made a three yet on the year, but it's also still coming back to full strength from a knee injury a year ago. You can see they've given her the green light to let it fly. Strong coming off a really nice game, 14 points against Villanova on Friday night as Spolier misses the three there. And Barnes, you know, had been playing really well going into Friday night's game against Xavier, but really just a tough game overall for everybody on Georgetown on Friday. So they'll turn it over. Spolier will try to push it up ahead to Bry the senior as Georgetown. A little tip there, but Butler will keep it. And referee wanted the shot clock to reset there as Georgetown momentarily had it. As we take a look at Kirk Godlewski there, the reigning Big East Coach of the Year. Tremendous job last year, 23-10 and 10 a season ago, 11-7 and 7 in conference play. And now his team 10-5 and 5 coming into this game, 2-2 two and two in conference play. So they have played well here over the last couple of games and really trying to ramp it up as we get into the heart of Big East play. He's done a nice job kind of steadying the ship here. Butler, like Georgetown, lost a lot of their scoring from last season. And Butler's kind of finding their rhythm. He's settled on basically a seven-player rotation uh, where everybody's starting to figure out their roles a little bit more as conference season goes along. Yeah, you look at their rotation, really, it's only Spolier who has been, who was on that team last year that's one of the keys, averaging over 18 points per game. And Spolier here, a little pull-up shot, knocks it down, and the foul. And not what Georgetown wants there on the pull-up jumper. It's two and ones now for Butler in the opening minutes. Kind of the exact opposite of what James Howard was hoping for defensively. Yeah, James Howard was frustrated with that game from Friday night against Xavier. Xavier, you were here, shot the lights out in that game, but clearly even outside of those made three-pointers, there was some frustration from him with the way his team played. Yeah, it's not exactly the same challenge today. Xavier really likes to spread the floor. Butler more of an inside-out type of team, both off the dribble and on post-ups. But the challenge remains the same, defending the paint. And on the Butler side, they're off to the 8-3 to lead here in the opening minutes of this game. But we saw from their game on Friday against Villanova, that second quarter, they could really lock down teams. They outscored Villanova 20-4 to in the second quarter. Really impressive. We'll see if they go to their full court press at all. They used that a little bit to slow down Villanova. Georgetown, not the same style of offense. They may play more in the half court. And another offensive rebound. Spolier thought she got hit on the putback, but Georgetown will get it off the miss there. Looked like a lot of contact, no call. So Georgetown will slow it down here. Try to work it inside and tip that out of bounds by Butler. So Georgetown, they're starting five, Jones. Osagi, Aresi, Kalova, Barnes, Bennett here. It's been a pretty much steady starting five over the last few games here, especially into conference play. We see now here Brianna Mayfield into the game for Georgetown, a true center on the roster, something that Butler doesn't have, that type of size. We'll see if she can make an impact inside. A miss there. Butler with the defensive rebound, and it's Genesis Parker, one of our key players. 11 points on Friday against Villanova. Really can score it well, though. She scored over 20 a couple of times this season. Spolier gets into the paint. Great job there protecting the ball and finishing in tight. If you're going to play that zone with Georgetown, the idea is to close down those driving lanes. And James Howard wants a timeout here for his Georgetown team. And exactly what he talked about, that he didn't want paint scoring, giving up free throw attempts, and Georgetown behind 10-3 to early on here with 6.06 to go in the first quarter. You're watching Butler Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network.
The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. We aren't just dreamers, we're doers. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time, none of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Uh. We're all in, all together, great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Welcome back to McDonough Arena. 10-3, to 3, the early lead for Butler here, ticking down under six minutes to go in the first quarter. Ben Gordon-Goldstein, Eric Tebow here with you between Butler and Georgetown. And the Hoyas, Eric, really trying to find some offense here as Barnes draws the foul. Butler's going to do a lot of switching, try to keep the ball in front of them. They're going to live with Georgetown making some long jump shots over the top. They want to just contest everything, close down the paint, and make Georgetown make outside jump shots. Outside jumper there off the back iron. Barnes is going to run it down and reset the shot clock here. So Barnes chases down the offensive rebound. Or Osagi Eresi here on the outside trying to set up the offense here for Georgetown. Kaleva at the top. Jones, a little step back jumper from the baseline, able to knock it down. And Georgetown gets a bucket here to make it 10 to 5. Jones is capable of making those shots. Not the highest percentage shots, those long twos, but she does have the ability to off the dribble to knock them down. One of the double-figure scorers for Georgetown in that game against Xavier. She had 13 on Friday night. Player has been one of the keys offensively for this team. As Spolier gets inside, but it's blocked away there by Mayfield, and that's what the size of Mayfield can do. Six foot five, the junior, able to block the shot. Rim protection and rebounding. That's what she's in there for. She gets a rebound about every three minutes that she plays. She can really help them defensively in the paint. Well, that's what James Howard said this Butler team does so well, get inside the paint. And so they bring in just a couple minutes into the game, Mayfield and already paying dividends. Butler a little trouble inbounding. They'll get it into Caceres who checked into this game and a travel is called. So good defense there by Mayfield and Caceres traveled. We're going to see a lot of Caceres at that high post. She gives them something different offensively. A, ba a big who can make some plays. She has good passing instincts and she can stretch the floor with her jump shot. So early on Osagi RSA running the point here for Georgetown. And Barnes, a little backdoor cut there, gets inside, off balance layup, no good, and well defended inside by Butler. It's now going to push the other way. Parker racing down the court. Great speed there. She draws the foul. You can see her athleticism on full display right there. That's to her weaker hand on the right hand in transition. Still able to couple, uh, cover 80 feet in just a couple of seconds. Yeah, you know, Parker, an interesting story, a player that's kind of bounced around a little bit, transfer from Cincinnati before that, Virginia Tech, but now the redshirt junior seems like she's found a home here at Butler. Scored 23 points earlier in the season against IUPUI and a double-digit scoring game against Villanova as well. You can see her settling, settling in, starting to make more plays for her teammates as she gets more comfortable within the group. Knocked down the first free throw. 
And now the second one rattles around and is good. And a 12-5 Butler lead here. Here's Barnes again coming off that struggle in the game again on Friday night. But overall, she's been the most consistent scorer on this team. Takes the three-pointer, it's no good. And nice box out there by Butler there to clean up the defensive rebound. This game's being played on Butler's terms right now. They're really controlling the glass and controlling the paint defensively. It's exactly where they wanted to do coming in. I thought it was a really good point that you brought up when we talked to Kirk Godlewski the other day about Butler's rebounding as Butler will turn it over there. But Butler, not a particularly large team, but they are still one of the best defensive rebounding teams in the conference. And they do a great job. It's team rebounding for them. Everybody puts a body on somebody and they do a great job boxing out. They don't have anybody in their main rotations that's over six foot one, but they're able to switch a lot. They're physical, even their wings are physical. So they get bodies on bodies and play inside out. And there you see good team defensive rebound once again. Butler with the transition opportunity. It's Caceres will get it into Spolier. Now into the paint, driving, bouncing around, and it rattles out. But an offensive rebound here now taken away by Barnes. And so Georgetown looking for a rare transition opportunity. And a double dribble there. Couldn't quite get the handle and a bad turnover there by Georgetown. Those are the ones we didn't see from Georgetown earlier in the season. These are the ones they can cut out of their game, just being a little bit more confident, a little bit more calm in the open court to get into their offense. You saw James Howard there momentarily, a third-year coach, 39-42 and 42 over his few years here at Georgetown. Team that played pretty well at the end of the season, but most of that team departed graduating as Georgetown a good box out there and a team that was nine and nine in conference last year has now lost three in a row they're one and four in the conference coming into this game and those are the situations where you're just hoping somebody can stabilize you offensively last year they've lost over 50 points out of their starting lineup here's Barnes a nice little move there and Mayfield will finish it off nice find inside though by Barnes as a Barnes even though she didn't get to the rim on that one her just being more aggressive, looking to make plays off the dribble into the paint for her teammates is going to open some things up for Georgetown. 12-7, Butler leading Georgetown, and Georgetown hanging around in this game. It's really felt like, as you said, game's been played on Butler's terms so far in this one, but Georgetown's been able to hang around so far in this one. And Spolier will dish it off, a little baseline jumper, shot clock winding down, no good, and a defensive rebound there for Barnes. Kovacikova checked into the game deep two. That's no good. And Butler will slow it down. Kovacikova was one of our key players that we highlighted in the open of this one, averaging over seven points a game. Really the biggest scorer off the bench for the Georgetown team. And Butler will get inside and draw the foul there. First foul on Mayfield. You can see Butler trying to find the soft spot in the middle of that zone. Not what Georgetown uh, has used to playing a lot of this year, there's going to be some things they have to fix on the fly and adjustments they're going to have to make. Butler getting to their spots right now. Strong, another one of those transfers on this Butler team. Quite a few that play a lot. Genesis Parker, who we've talked about. Catherine Strong's a transfer from VCU, averaging over seven points a game and scored in double figures five times this year. So she's been one of the key scorers. She misses that first free throw there for Butler. We'll see now for Butler with Spolier off the floor where they go offensively. Do they put Genesis Parker in more pick and roll situations? It's going to be a little tougher against the zone. Or are they going to play through Caceres at the high post? And two misses there for Strong at the free throw line. A 58% free throw shooter coming into this game. So on her strong suit and misses a couple. Driving inside is Jones and a good aggressive move there. She draws the foul. Georgetown's going to have to do that against Butler switching. Make sure they have good spacing and let their guards attack some of Butler's post players off the bounce. That's a nice move there. Brianna Jones really strong with the ball going through the two defenders and then drawing the foul inside. And so she gets a couple from the line. And Georgetown team that shoots 69% as a team. Jones is right on that number as well as she misses a couple and 
See James Franklin talking to a couple of his bench players, a couple of the younger bench players. James Howard there is Cassandra Gordon checking into the game as well, along with Kovacikova. A couple of sophomores have checked into the game and really about as deep as Georgetown's going to go off the bench. About three players off the bench and Gordon and Kovacikova coming into the game. Tatiana Thompson out there too. She missed their game the other night against Xavier. She'll give them a little bit of an offensive uh, punch in the front court. Thompson, another one of the big players, right at six foot. Forward there trying to protect the paint as well. So the shot clock winding down. Strong will pull up, and a tough jumper there knocks it down. And Butler leads 14-8. to eight. It's about a minute to go here in the first quarter. Kovacikova. Both teams going to the benches here towards the end of the quarter. Jones will pull up. Not close there. Georgetown trying to save it. And it's Butler who will get it going back the other way. And Parker is going to try to take it all the way to the basket. No good. Cleaned up by Strong. And now a fight for the ball. And a foul there. Just the third team foul, though, on Butler. So they had a couple to give here in the last minute of the first quarter. And it'll just be an inbound for Georgetown. See if Georgetown tries to go two for one here in this situation. Great opportunity to control the end of the quarter and get a couple possessions. About an 18 second difference between the two clocks. It's Kovacikova in the screen by Kalova. And not quite going quick enough for that two for one opportunity. So she's going to pull it back out here for Georgetown and slow it down some more. So where Butler switching is an advantage. It really makes you work into the clock, having to play more isolation basketball. And Butler gets the turnover. Now we'll heave it up ahead. Spolier is there. She'll go right to the basket, draw the foul. And so Butler had it, chance to hold for one. Instead, they push it, and Spolier will draw a couple of free throws. Spolier doing what she does best, 108 free throw attempts on the season coming into this game. That's the fifth highest in the country. We've seen her a couple times at the line already. When she gets there, normally knocks them down, an 80% free throw shooter. And you look at what Butler has done overall in the season, 354 free throw attempts on the air, and as you mentioned, a lot of those because of Spolier who knocks down the first one. And you look the other side, Georgetown just not quite as aggressive getting inside only 242 attempts. So more than 100 difference there on the free throw attempts. And Butler has doubled up Georgetown now, 16 to eight here in the closing seconds here of the first quarter. So Georgetown can hold for one if they want it. That was the last foul that Butler had to give. Georgetown will inbound with 13.6 seconds. Pull up jumper here for Jones, no good. And Butler will save it here, seven seconds to go in the first quarter. Deep three pointer is no good. And not a pretty last couple of seconds here for either team in the first quarter. And Georgetown will get it with a chance for one final heave here to end the quarter and Kovacikova will just dribble it out, and that's how things will finish up here in the first quarter of play. So Butler's carried over that defensive effort from Friday night against Villanova. 16-8, Butler leading Georgetown. You're watching Georgetown Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped. 
with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets. 16 to 8, Butler leading Georgetown here at the second quarter, McDonough Arena. And tickets for the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep turns to Wintrust Arena, downtown Chicago, March 6th to the 9th. All session tickets for the 2020 Conference Tournament are on sale now, starting at just $50. For tickets, visit www.bigeast.com backslash WBB tickets. That's bigeast.com backslash WBB tickets for action to this year's Big East Women's Basketball Tournament there in Chicago. So we get set here, Eric, for the second quarter of play between Butler and Georgetown. And really, I think a lot has carried over from both teams' Friday night games. Butler played really well defensively against Villanova and won that game going away against the Wildcats. And Georgetown on the other side, kind of sloppy against Xavier and really haven't cleaned it up a whole lot in this game. Butler's following their recipe for success that they found in the past few games. Defend the paint, rebound the ball on the offensive end, and get to the foul line. Already eight free throw attempts and six offensive boards. Georgetown's got to clean up those areas. So Georgetown will have it here, trailing by eight at the start of the second quarter. In Georgetown, three straight losses coming into this game. Butler back-to-back -back wins. And Georgetown will keep a couple of the bench players. Nice little cut there, but the missed layup. Kalova gets her own rebound and misses once again. So a couple of chances in tight for Georgetown here at the start of the second quarter. Not able to finish, and that was something that James Howard really lamented about. Opportunities in tight that they have not been able to finish. It's tough, too, when it's on a play with nice execution. Thompson did a great job finding Kalova on the cut down the lane. Got to have those ones. Three-pointer here for Butler, good box out. And it's Osagi Eresi who will come away with it and push here for Georgetown. Nice little crossover, but she misses the layup and Butler will get it away. So a couple of chances, nice plays by Georgetown. First the nice pass and then the nice drive, but both times not able to make the layup. They gotta stay with it. Those are plays they need to make. Cuts into the paint, drives into the paint in transition. They have to soften up this Butler defense. So here we see Georgetown in that zone, and they get the turnover off the zone. There it was something that James Howard said they were going to play more zone. But for a team, if they're not used to playing the zone, how difficult is that to bring it in and play it quite a bit? It's tough. They're, they're fortunate to have Anita Kalev on the back line, who's their smartest defensive player. Uh, and she's going to be able to patch it together and talk her teammates through the game. Another missed shot there by Georgetown. So they start off the second quarter 0 of 4. And Spolier spinning inside, not able to make it. And so just about two minutes into the second quarter is a fight for the loose ball. And a little bit of an ugly start to this quarter. And now another turnover here for Georgetown. It's Parker who will kick Spolier. A couple of pumps and no good. And not a pretty start for either team. No made shots, couple of turnovers, and still 16 date as we tick under eight to go here in the quarter. We've seen Georgetown be careless a couple times in transition with the ball. You don't have to make home run plays in transition. They just need quality possessions on the offensive end. Get down, get into your stuff, and get a good shot each time down. And Georgetown with three bench players here on the court to begin the second quarter as Thompson has that one knocked away. Thompson, Gordon, Kovacikova started the quarter, and now their leading scorer, Taylor Barnes, will check back in for Kovacikova. But James Howard really relying on the bench here over the last couple of minutes of the first quarter and here into the second as well. He's just trying to find some combination that works. You can see what Thompson brings. She's made a couple good plays in the interior there. Georgetown just hasn't capitalized. There's another three-pointer as the shot clock winding down, and Osagi Eresi able to knock it down, and a big three-pointer there for Georgetown, who hadn't scored in quite some time. Marvelous is a great story. It's her first year on scholarship here after being a, just a really good part of this program. And the answer there from Butler, big shot from Torre. The outside, the freshman starting here for Butler, knocks it down and back to an eight point lead for Butler. She's an exciting freshman. They gotta be looking forward to seeing more of her. And now the steal here from Torre going to the basket and a good defensive play by Gordon to get back and force a tough layup. 
Georgetown, a little trouble on the pseudo press here from Butler, and they will just get it up, and now RSA, a little pull-up jumper for Caleb. Tough sequence there for Butler. The coaching staff not too happy. They thought it was a foul on the breakaway layup. They didn't think Georgetown got it across in 10 seconds. It was close. It was tight there. Just at 20 seconds, Aresi was, Osagi Aresi was bringing it up across half court. And so a six point game, a little pull up jumper there. And Butler's done a really nice job of answering both of the baskets here for Georgetown. First the three, and now with the jumper, and Butler maintaining that eight point advantage. I think it's safe to say Catherine Strong's confidence has come back in these last couple weeks. She's taken hesitation off the dribble pull up jumpers, and that's your center in this lineup right now. She's, she's feeling pretty good. Osagi or Essie has really been the one to set up the offense for Georgetown so far in this game. Barnes, nice little dish off. Caleb, they not able to finish, and it's Butler who comes away with it. Strong was eyeing up another one there. I think the coaching staff was telling her to swing it. She was thinking, I just made one. Maybe pull a three here off the dribble. Parker here, slowing it down. On the floor with Torre and Strong here. Now it's Torre, five on the shot clock. Got to get something going. Caceres, Parker now inside, Strong. No good, but she'll get her own rebound. Miss on that one, get another one, and miss that one, and kind of shaking her head and a wry smile there from Strong. Can't believe that she wasn't able to finish inside with all those opportunities. She knew the shot clock was running down. She had a little bit more time than she thought on that first attempt. So still an eight-point lead as Georgetown nearly turns it over once again. Toure really disruptive for Butler. You can see her using her length. She already jumped one passing lane. Now she's out there denying on the wing. Here she is involved again. Osagi Arese pretty strong with the ball there. Bounces off a defender, able to control and make the layup there. And so 21 to 15 here. Georgetown still hanging around in this game, dropping back into that zone as well with under five to go here in the second quarter. Strong has been a big part of the offense. A little fade away, maybe not her shot there. And Georgetown gets the defensive rebound. Georgetown not sending a double team or any traffic. They're going to make Strong score over Anita Kalova, who's Georgetown's best defender. Another turnover here. Heave it up ahead. Spolier ahead of the pack. And Spolier will able to finish. And so... And now a little sloppy turnover here for Georgetown. Osagi Arese stepped in when she was inbounding the ball and turns it over. And we go to the timeout here on the floor and James Howard cannot be happy. 23 to 15, Butler leads. You're watching Butler Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you people yeah. can tell me to stop. Uh. together, great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. And welcome back to McDonough Arena. Ben Gordon-Goldstein, Eric Tebow with you as we take a look at the last sequence here 
between Georgetown and Butler. And Eric, you are the associate head coach of a world championship team. And so as we saw that last sequence here in the inbounds play, how hard would it be to go to that timeout and not shatter your clipboard seeing what happened here? Coach James Howard probably just talking to his team about discipline right here. Almost every team has a rule about who takes the ball out of the basket, takes it out of bounds after a made shot. And most of the time to a player, it doesn't seem like a big deal. But other, if you don't stay with what your principles are, you're going to end up every now and then with something like happened right there for Georgetown. The point guard takes it out of the net, bad exchange back and forth, and all of a sudden you're giving Butler an extra possession that they didn't have to earn. So a transition bucket for Spolier there to make it an eight-point lead, and then just the sloppy turnover on the inbounds play. And no press even on for Butler there, and just the turnover there as Osagi Eresi now with five turnovers so far in this game. Georgetown seven turnovers overall as a team. And so now Butler will get the ball back with an opportunity for a double digit lead for first time in this game. Georgetown not shooting it great. You can mitigate that sometimes by just taking care of the basketball, getting some extra possessions on the offensive glass. But if you're turning it over uh, needlessly, you're really reducing your margin for error. Eight offensive rebounds for Butler. Seven turnovers for Georgetown and an easy bucket there off the inbounds play as Bry able to finish. And Bry, senior on this Butler team as it's now a 10-point lead. Doesn't score a lot, but really does everything for Butler as a foul is called here. Bry takes tough defensive matchups. She rebounds the ball. She puts her body on the line. Had 13 boards against Villanova the other day in their win. Uh, just holds their defense together. See the uh, foul there on Atuso who checked into the ball game. One of the bench players coming in for Butler, really only going about seven or eight deep for Butler, but they have the 10-point lead as Barnes' little pump fake there, cross-court pass. Jones able to get inside, no good, but an offensive rebound, and that one is missed, and it's tipped around, and Butler has held a big rebounding advantage in this game, and they continue to do so. 22 rebounds to Georgetown's 15 now in the game. James Howard mentioned before the game their missed rebounds from the other night against Xavier, and you've seen more of the same in the second quarter tonight. They make three or four of these layups in the second quarter. We're looking at a one or two possession game. Good recovery there by Kalova, as it looked like Spolier was all alone in the paint, and Kalova came flying over to block the shot. So Georgetown will get it back. Still trailing by 10, though. 25 to 15, about three minutes to go here in the second quarter. There's Osagi Arese. She's done a nice job of getting into the paint, but hasn't been able to finish a couple of times. And Georgetown get another opportunity. And we'll see if Barnes can get into the offense a little bit more here. She's got just three points so far. A pull-up jumper there. Kalova, offensive rebound, and able to finish. And Kalova's got four so far in the game. That's what Georgetown's strategy has to be right there. They just need to get shots up on the rim. They have people capable of offensive rebounding. They have size advantage on the interior. Four points, five rebounds for Kalova. And a pull-up jumper here from outside and off the side of the backboard there. No good, and Georgetown will get it back. 25 to 17 here. Genesis Parker with the miss there for Butler. So Butler hasn't shot it particularly well in this game, and that's why Georgetown, despite a shooting of 7 of 26 so far, make it 7 of 27, and a foul drawn there. But Georgetown right at about 25% shooting in this game. But go to the line, a chance to make it a six-point game. I think if you offered James Howard the shots from where they're getting them on the floor, he'd probably take it in the second quarter. Caleb and Thompson have really worked well on the high-low on the inside against the zone. They just haven't been able to convert. So Kalova will get a couple of free throws here for Georgetown. Knocks down the first. Kalova, really good free throw shooter. Now 16 of 17 from the free throw line so far this season. So hasn't gotten there a ton, but see a nice stroke there. And we'll get one more to try to make it a six-point game once again. So this is kind of the margin where it's hung around as she does knock down that second one. But margin where it's been around, right about six or eight for Butler. Butler's largest lead is 10, but it's hung around here in this game. And Butler will go back to work offensively. Spolier leads all scorers so far in this game. 
I've been pretty impressed here with Georgetown's zone for a team that hasn't played it a ton. They've talked well to each other, handing off matchups. Casera thought she got hit on the shot and then ends up banking it in and back to an eight-point lead. The lack of the foul call and the bank probably equaled each other out on that one. Here's Barnes once again. James Howard said he was looking for her to be a little bit more aggressive in this game. Coming off a four-point game against Xavier and an air ball there on the three-pointer. And with about a minute to go, Butler will get it back up by eight. Good job by Bry on the close out there. She might have got a piece of that little fingernail on the ball in the corner. Here's Parker slowing it down. Caceres on the floor with her. And Bry the senior. Along with Torre. And Spolier, Spolier the leading scorer on the team, third in Big East in scoring as well. Shot clock winding down, now down to three. Kick it outside, Spolier have to heave it up and it's no good. And Caleb uh, is able to come down with the defensive rebound. About a two second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. So Georgetown will uh, run it down here as far as they can. About 20 on the shot clock and a couple seconds more on the game clock, and it's Barnes who controls it just in front of us. Now under 10 on the shot clock. Barnes driving inside and traveled with it. I'd like to see that one back. I didn't see the travel there. Barnes kind of a tight dribble to her body on that last step. I think he got hit away from her, and then she recovered it. And Travel is called, so Butler will get the last shot of the first half, 27 to 19. Butler leads it, nine on the clock as Parker picks it up, takes a quick three and knocks it down, and a huge shot there for Butler as the first half is gonna expire on that shot, and it's the largest lead of the game as well as Genesis Parker knocks down the three-pointer, 11-point lead for Butler as we head to the half. So 30 to 19, Butler leading Georgetown. Halftime here at McDonough Arena. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Time here at McDonough Arena, 30 to 19, Butler leading Georgetown, and the Big East Fast Break is a weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis, breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at 3:30 p.m. Eastern on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. On this week's episode, Megan and Ashley run around the Big East and hit on every team in the fastest three minutes in women's hoops. We definitely had a lot of fun looking around the league to see what was going on within these first four games. Mm -hmm. And so what we put up were we looked around all 10 teams. We came away with our biggest takeaways. We have 18 seconds to break each of these teams down. Ashley, you're on the clock, clock to start us off. All right, we are going to start here with Butler. They got their first conference win this week. 
as they took on Xavier. A big feather in their cap right there. The first one is always one of the toughest. The Bulldogs led for nearly 33 minutes on Saturday. And Nida Caceres, the best day of her Butler career with 23.7 rebounds and four steals. Now Creighton has four-time Big East Player of the Week, Jalen Agnew. However, we're going to look at defense for this J squad. They haven't allowed an opponent to score more than 75 points in a game this season. And yeah, that includes the Blue Demons, who are third in the nation in scoring offense, averaging 86.9 points per game. All right, taking a look at DePaul, the only team left to remain undefeated in conference play. We're going to be taking a look at some of their play a little bit later on, but as for now, they are outscoring every other team in the Big East. Check this, 193 steals in just 15 games. That's leading the conference by far. Well, the Warriors have been struggling to find their identity this season after they graduated a pair of 1,000-point scorers, if you remember Dorothy Adamako and Deanna White. However, Memphis grad transfer Taylor Barnes has been the answer. She's averaging 13.1 points per game, the only Hoya to be averaging in double figures. And over to Marquette, their first Big East win. We were just talking about them. We weren't sure kind of how those pieces were going to fit after losing so many seniors last year, Megan, but playmakers like Lauren Van Clunen, Selena Scott, Jordan King, they are the ones getting the job done. They have a chance to make a big statement this week with St. John's and Seton Hall. Heading out to Friartown. The Friars are still looking for their first Big East win of the year. Reigning Big East Freshman of the Year, Mary Baskerville, leads the way for the Friars. However, what sticks about out about this team is they are tough underneath the glass, specifically their defensive rebounding. They're first in the conference in defensing boards, averaging 28.7. And over to Seton Hall, a lot of conference play left, but right now the Hall's only conference loss comes to Villanova. And I really like that they had a nice fast start against Georgetown this past weekend, outscoring the Hoyas 23-8 to in that first quarter. That is exactly what you need to win in conference play. Well, the preseason number two St. John's Red Storm is meeting expectations. St. John's is second in the conference in scoring average, right behind DePaul, averaging 75.1 points per game. And a lot of that has to do with the backcourt duo Tiana England and Kadasha Hoppy. However, this offense is versatile. They are just two of four Johnnies averaging in double figures. And Villanova, a very impressive start. 3-1 and one in conference play. Coming home 2-0 and oh after that New York swing. And I have said it before, Megan, watch out because Kadeka and Seacrest are coming. In just 14 games, they have combined for 533 points. That is insane. Seagrass is first in the league. Now first year head coach Melanie Moore and the Xavier Musketeers, they're still looking for their first Big East win of the season as well. Junior Ariana Gray has 19 career double-doubles, three this season, notching a career high 28 points in the Musketeers. Last game against Butler, she's second in the conference in scoring and a key hog for this Musketeers offense. You're watching Butler Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 National University high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders in these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change, go no. And welcome back to McDonough Arena here. 30 to 19, Butler leading at the half. Ben Goring Goldstein, Eric Tebow back with you here. And Eric, we've talked about a lot throughout the first half. Butler's defense has been really good. And how Georgetown's going to figure out a way to score is really the big key to the second half. Butler's closed down the paint. Georgetown only six points in the paint for the half. 
Butler's gotten out and pressured their jump shooters, and it's really set the tone for the, on the defensive end of the floor. Yeah, we'll see the stats in a moment as we take a look at the highlights here of the first half. But Georgetown has really struggled to score so far in this first half as we take a look at some of them. And Genesis Parker has really done a nice job for for Butler, she hit that big three-pointer there at the end of the half, and Spolier as well. But Butler doing a nice job of getting into the paint and then outside hitting some jumpers as well. The two lefty guards are making them go, Spolier and Parker. Uh, Parker obviously with the big three to end the half, step back to her weaker hand. That's a tough play. And Spolier leading all scores with nine points. Three of 11 shooting, though, so not great shooting for her. And on the other side for Georgetown, again, just trying to figure out how to get some offense. Caleb leads all scores on Georgetown with six. James Howard's trying to find some combinations that work on the offensive end of the floor. He's gone to the bench. The bench has not stepped up the same way they have in some previous games, including Friday night against Xavier. George they, oh, they need a lift from somebody off the bench. Georgetown has hit a couple of three-pointers here in the first half. Barnes, Osagi, Aresi with a couple of three-pointers for Georgetown. So just about seven minutes away from the start of the second half. It's Butler, 30, Georgetown, 19. You're watching Georgetown Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. 30 to 19, Butler leading Georgetown here. We're at the half between Butler and Georgetown. Ben Gorin Goldstein, Eric Tebow back with you here. And Eric, we get into some of the stats here in the first half. And really what stands out to me is just struggling from both teams shooting wise here in the first half. Neither team's a great three point shooting team. Butler usually a little bit more effective on the inside and Georgetown really struggling on the offensive of the floor. Uh, offensive end of the floor to try to find something working on the interior. And so 33% shooting for Butler, 25% shooting for Georgetown, but really the key we talked about at the beginning of the game, turnovers and points in the paint so far in this game. Butler has dominated on both of those fronts. And Georgetown hasn't scored a single point off Butler's turnovers. That's been the big difference to me. Butler has converted off of George Georgetown's miscues in for 12 points at the other end, where Georgetown hasn't been able to even that up. Yeah, you know, we looked at the turnovers in this game, 8-5, to five, so Georgetown probably wants to cut down on some of those turnovers a little bit. And obviously sloppy on some of the turnovers, but not an extremely high number of turnovers for Georgetown in, in this first half. But the problem has been that Butler has really done a nice job of scoring off of these turnovers so far in this game. You've seen uh, Spolier and Toure for Butler get their hands active in the passing lanes, leading directly to some fast break points at the, end of the other end of the floor. So Butler has the 11-point lead here at the end of the first half, just a few minutes away from the second half of play, 30-19, to Butler leading Georgetown. You're watching Butler Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic.
We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you people yeah. can tell me to stop. Uh. Approaching the start of the second half here at McDonough Arena, 30 to 19, Butler leading Georgetown. And tickets are on sale now for the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament. It's presented by Jeep and it returns to the Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago, March 6th to the 9th. All session tickets for the 2020 Conference Tournament are now on sale, just $50. For tickets, visit www.bigeast.com backslash WBB tickets. That's bigeast.com backslash WBB tickets. So Eric about to start the second half here. Butler leading 30 to 19. Not exactly the prettiest first half of play offensively, but Butler continues to defend extremely well, holding Georgetown to 19 points, 25% shooting in that first half. Butler's mixed in a little bit of zone. I'm curious to see if they think they were effective in that zone. Georgetown missed some shots that were very makeable around the rim. I don't know if Butler feels that zone was effective or they just got a little bit lucky. So Butler will start with their starting five on the court to begin this second half. Georgetown as well trots out the starting five as well. And Bennett, nice find there inside by Osagi Aresi and Georgetown. So it'll bucket there in a nine point game. Bennett got the quick hook in the first half, but he's going back with her to start the second half. She was a solid performer the other night against Xavier. We'll see if she can give him a lift in this third quarter. Not playing a ton of minutes for Bennett, the freshman, but has been getting the starts. She mentioned 6.7 rebounds against Xavier and good defensive play there and Georgetown will get it back there. Knocked out of bounds off of Butler. Georgetown did a better job in the second quarter of not putting Butler on the line. Butler shot eight free throws in the first quarter, none in the second quarter. Plays like that, you can see Bennett pull her arms back, make Butler finish the shot. I think they also cleaned up the defensive glass much better there in that second quarter of play and Really, if they had given Butler some more second chance opportunities, this game could have gotten away from Georgetown even more in an early turnover here. But Georgetown limiting the second chance opportunities, still the turnovers, but a nine point Butler lead. And so Georgetown hanging around in this one. Spolier, who led all scorers in the first half, she had nine points in that first half of play. Now work it inside. Parker hit the big three-pointer for the end of the half to give Butler their largest lead of the game at 11. And now Spolier will pull up for three. It's no good, and Georgetown probably has to be pretty happy if they're limiting Butler to shots with the shot clock winding down. Barnes a little off balance going to the basket, and Butler will get it back. Parker, a lot of contact, kick it back out. A strong little pull-up jumper and the foul. She's probably made her most difficult shots tonight. A couple pull-ups contested over length, 
missed a couple chippies around the rim, but you can see she's playing with a lot of confidence off the dribble. Uh, Sagi Aresi did not think that was a foul. It was some contact. And now it's back up to an 11-point lead for Butler. And a chance to give them their largest lead of the game, Strong. Does so, and a 12-point game. So Georgetown, the key here is going to be if they can figure out how to attack this Butler defense. Scoring just 19 points in the first half. Barnes trying to get involved more, and then a nice aggressive play, drawing the foul there. As good as Shea Bry is defensively, guarding Barnes on a switch is a tough ask, especially in space. You can see Barnes' ability to change directions and attack the basket uh, is difficult for any big in this league to guard. Barnes had played really well going into that Friday night game against Xavier, but she was held to a, equaling a season low of four points. She knocks down the first free throw, but prior to that game, she'd scored double-figure points in eight straight games and really seemed like she was starting to emerge, but now over the last couple of games, not great for Barnes and trying to find it once again. they got to find a way to get her some more shot attempts. Only four attempts in the first half. She probably needs to be at 12 or 13 field goal attempts for the game. It's a good sign for them that she's out aggressive early in this third quarter. Drive inside. Shot missed there. Georgetown will get it away. And Jones will try to push. She's got Barnes on the far wing. And Butler, a nice job of getting back there, setting up the defense here. A little kick out, deep baseline jumper, that's no good. Tipped around and Jones will come up with it and a second chance here for Georgetown. Nearly turned it over there, but Jones will keep it. And shot clock down under 10 here, pull up jumper and knocks it down. Second chance opportunity, that's going to be Georgetown's bread and butter here. They may not make the first shot. They have size on the glass to go get a second opportunity. And every time it seems like the game's about to get away from Georgetown, they go on a little 4-0, 5-0 run, keep within striking distance, and back to that eight-point deficit, which is right around where most of this game has sat so far. And so Butler working with their shot clock under 10 now. Spolier trying to get inside. Barnes, good tough defense. Now down to two. Have to put it up, and Bry did not get it off. And nice defense there by Georgetown. Great job by Taylor Barnes sitting on Spolier's spin move. Everybody in the league knows she loves that spin. Stay down in a stance, keep your hands back, and make her make a shot over the top. Good tough defense there. James Howard has got to be happy with that effort defensively. And now Georgetown. Trying to still get it inside here against Butler, get to the basket, and well, Jones will pull up for the jumper, and quick jumper cleared away by Butler. Here's Parker, great athleticism as she goes to the basket and draws the foul. She is quick off the bounce. Parker in the open floor is going to be something Butler relies on the rest of the season. She can just be a game changer when she has opportunities in transition. Kind of see right as she gets the half court there on the replay, just turns on the Jets and flies past everybody and she's been one that's been playing really well for Butler here recently. Now we'll get a couple of free throws here. And first one goes off the back iron. Parker 61% free throw shooter coming into this game. Five points so far for her. But she's been all over the floor. Five rebounds as well. And off the front rim and in on the second one. And now it looks like Butler's going to pick it up full court. And so we'll see how Georgetown handles this for the first time in the game. We saw this Butler press against Villanova. First time we're really seeing it today. We'll see probably one hard trap, maybe one more on the reversal. Georgetown's got to get, get the ball up the floor and go. Gordon nearly threw it away, but they keep it. And now Bennett, a chance underneath. And it's blocked away and go back to Georgetown. But a pretty good job beating the press. Nearly got trapped in the corner there. And then got it up ahead. And Caleb a little fine to Bennett and knocked out of bounds by Butler. So Georgetown trying to inbound and Spolier tips it away. Now racing down the court, misses the layup. And fortunate there for Georgetown. And now Jones will push back. Had Bennett underneath the hoop all alone and said it's Barnes who will go. And the finish, good, strong finish by Barnes. And that might be what Georgetown needs, this game to open up a little bit. You saw it against the press, and now you see it off the rebound in transition. They may need to get the ball on the open floor and try to be aggressive early in the shot clock. Barnes now with seven points in the game. She's got four so far here in the second half and a seven-point Butler lead. 
And now a travel, so a turnover there by Butler. Caceres just a little bit sped up today. That's her third turnover at the high post. Just take a deep breath, survey her options. She's a skilled player in that position. Georgetown has been mixing around these lineups for James Howard and maybe finding one that he likes here with Sandra Gordon off the bench. A couple of the starters as well, and four starters and Gordon on the floor here for Georgetown. A little bit more speed. Gordon allows them to push the ball a little bit more. And now she controls and a little handoff to Jones. Jones getting inside. Floater, good, and a five-point game. See Georgetown starting to be more aggressive off the dribble, not settling as much for their long jump shots, getting two feet in the paint and trying to make a play. Five points so far for Jones. Georgetown right at about 30% shooting for the game, but Butler similar as well. And so neither team has shot it well, and so it's a five-point game here, under five to go in the third quarter. Parker will pull up for three. That's no good. She hit one at the end of the first half. And now here's Jones once again. And this lineup is looking to run a little bit more for Georgetown. Butler, though, does a nice job of getting back on defense. Coach Howard talked about this year's team not as big of a threat in transition. But it's probably worth the risk right now to try to take some opportunities early on. Barnes' three-pointer is good. She's got seven so far here in the second half into double-figure scoring. Timeout, Butler, and it's a two-point game as Georgetown, a couple of buckets in a row. You see Barnes driving to the basket with the finish, followed it up with the three, and it's a two-point game with 4.30 to go in the third. You're watching Georgetown Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We're on it, we got to raise it up. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. together, great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Four thirty to go here in the third quarter. Thirty-four to thirty-two, Butler leading Georgetown. But Eric, nice little run here by Georgetown, getting out in transition and hitting some outside jumpers as well. Quick 7-0 run for Georgetown, and it's their two most experienced players, Brianna Jones and Taylor Barnes, who felt the change in tempo in the game. They saw some opportunities in transition, and all of a sudden, the Georgetown speed is picked up. Yeah, James Howard was telling us pregame he was trying to find lineups that could run a little bit more, and they seem to have found one when Gordon was out on the floor. They're going to go back to Kayla Bud now, though, with this with their regular starting lineup, but they found the lineup that could run a little bit, just the two-point game, and Taylor Barnes has really been a key here in the second half. Ten points now in the game, seven points total, and Georgetown has made this one a game, just the two-point game here. Spolier will take the corner three-pointer. That's no good, and it's Barnes, who's been everywhere so far in the second half. 
grabbing the defensive rebound, and now Georgetown a chance to tie or take the lead for the first time since very early in this one. Well, double team, Osagi Arese nearly loses it, rips it back. Still 12 on the shot clock. The intensity on defense seems to have been amped up here for Butler, hands everywhere. Now five on the shot clock, Barnes gonna have to do it herself. Shot blocked, heaves it up, and Spolier's ahead of the pack here. Thought it was a shot clock violation, but Spolier will get the layup there. That shot didn't hit the rim. I'm surprised we didn't get a whistle there after the Georgetown miss. The Georgetown players kind of stopped thinking it was going to be a shot clock violation, and Spolier did not head of the pack, and so she's got 11 to lead all scorers now in this game and stops the 7-0 run by Georgetown. Spolier has a great knack for finding opportunities in transition, leaking out ahead of the pack. It's a couple times we've seen that today. Barnes maybe a little bit of a heat check there on that three-pointer, no good. And so Butler trying to calm things down. Kirk Godlewski took the timeout after the 7-0 run and see the defensive effort Butler stepped up and now trying to score on back-to-back -back possessions as Butler leads it by four. Kick it cross court. That's going to be a three-pointer and no good. Defensive rebound, though. Cleared away, and Georgetown will get it. So second chance, and now they throw it away, and Butler will get it back. Very opportunistic there from Butler. Toure and Atusu, really athletic defenders. They've got great length, and they are ball hawks. They got right on a quick double team, just saw the opportunity in the backcourt and forced the turnover. A couple of the bench players in for Butler. You mentioned Atusu, also Caceres into the game as well. Now a nice little cut here by Spolier inside off balance, no good. Strong offensive rebound both by the player and on the effort, and she'll get a couple at the line. You see Spolier always moving against that zone. She keeps flashing at the high post, sprinting out to the corners, and just causes chaos in that back line for Georgetown. And a little confusion there, because there was a timeout called by Georgetown, but we do have a timeout on the floor with 2.14 to go here in the third quarter of play. 36 to 32, 2.14 to go here in the third. You're watching Butler Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's bring it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. 
36 to 32. Butler leading Georgetown with 2.14 to go here in the third quarter of play. And so Georgetown has done a nice job in this third quarter coming out, making it a game once again. And that little 7-0 run made it a two-point game, but Georgetown now hasn't scored over the last couple of minutes. A couple of careless possessions in the backcourt where they've actually gotten the stop they were looking for and then thrown the ball the way, uh, away in the backcourt. Butler now getting back to the foul line getting back to what gave them some success early in the game and throughout the season. Yeah, Catherine Strong will get a couple of free throw opportunities, one of three from the line, but she's got four offensive rebounds now in this game. So the second chance opportunities for Butler. And the first free throw is good. So she's now two of four from the line, 37 to 32. Georgetown went on 7-0, 11-1 run as well. Made it a two-point game. So they missed the second free throw, and Caleb a good box out there on Spolier. So five-point game, about two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Georgetown has their five starters on the floor. Butler tips that one away. Butler's got four of their five starters in Tuso on the floor here for the Bulldogs. It's Kalova trying to get it to Bennett. Bennett's surrounded by three players inside, and it's Spolier who comes away with it and spins away, and the senior smartly slows it down. You can see Butler swarming the ball as soon as it got to the high post. They know that's the weak spot for him. As soon as it went there, they were alert to it and got people around the ball. Work it inside now. Bry back outside. Driving in here, blocked away and kicked around, loose ball, and it's Butler who come up with it. Shot clock didn't reset, there's two on it. Heave up there by Strong, nearly made it. And Georgetown will come away with the defensive rebound. Pretty good effort though defensively. Good alertness by Strong, she almost got rewarded for it. So about a minute to go here in the third quarter. Looking it around the outside, Bennett, nice flash inside and they call the walk. I thought Bennett got the ball knocked out of her hands, but officials saying it's going the other way. So a few turnovers here. Georgetown now had got it to a two-point game with about four minutes to go in the third quarter. And now it's been about 340 since they've scored here for Georgetown. So Butler, after that timeout by Kirk Godlewski, has amped up the defense. Well, Georgetown scoreless and back up to a five-point game with 15 on the shot clock. Spolier, careless pass there, turns it over, and Georgetown will get it back. About a five-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Kalova surprises everybody with her long arms for Georgetown. She gets her hand on the ball a ton, both on the, on the glass and defensively. She's one of Georgetown's leaders in block shots and just gets deflections all game long. Osagi Arese lost the ball as she was going up with it, and... Shot clock never reset here. I don't know if the refs see it. It should just be off, though, and they do finally turn it off. Ten seconds to go here in the third quarter. Butler hold for one. It's Parker at the top of the key. Parker driving inside, lost the ball, was stripped away. Georgetown gets it back, a heave here, and that is how the third quarter of play will come to an end. So Georgetown, nice job here in the third quarter, stays in it. They fell behind by 12 at one point, but it's a five-point game. Butler leading Georgetown 37-32 to as we head to the fourth. You're watching Georgetown Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now.
We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. Thirty-seven to thirty-two as we get set for the fourth quarter of play. Ben Gordon Goldstein, Eric Tebow back with you here as we get set for the final quarter here from McDonough Arena. And you saw the Georgetown huddle there, but Eric, the associate head coach of the Washington Mystics, I always like to cheat off of your papers since you're the coach here. I saw in between breaks highlighting some of the things Spolier poor shooting, poor three point shooting by Butler, but they still lead. They do, and Spolier is having a tough shooting game. What I like about Spolier, though, is that she never stops moving. She's always flashing into the high post. She's running the baseline. Defensively, she stays in the game. She's opportunistic. Usually when a player stays that way, even through tough shooting, it tends to come back around. She can have a big quarter here if she gets uh, her offense going a little bit. Four of 17 shooting for Spolier. She does lead all scorers with 11 points. On the other side for Georgetown Barnes, who just had the ball there, now gets it back top to key leads Georgetown in scoring with 10. She had seven in the third quarter, and Caleb uh, misses on the pass there. Could have been a nice play to a cutting Thompson. Georgetown really looking for that high-low when they get to the foul line. If they would take a deep breath a little bit, they have a shooter open on the weak side. Butler's tracking that flash to the high post, leaving exposed on the backside. So neither team has shot it well in this game. 12 of 40 shooting for Georgetown, 13 of 47, make it 14 of 47 for Butler and a seven point lead. Georgetown does have Thompson out on the floor with four of the starters to begin this fourth quarter of play. Barnes will take the three pointer off a nice pass and she knocks it down. Her second three pointer of the second half and she's got 13. They've got to move that Butler defense side to side, especially when it gets back into Barnes's hand. She's going to initiate a lot of possessions. They need to make sure she touches it once she gives it up. Barnes coming off a four-point game against Xavier as a foul is called here on Osagi Aresi. That's her third foul of the game. But the four-point game for Barnes on Friday night, but has bounced back nicely here, especially in the third quarter. She was a little bit slow there in the first half, but now she's got 13 in the game and keeping Georgetown in it. Parker will swing it around. Driving inside is Strong. Strong misses, gets the offensive rebound, puts it back up and in, and Strong has had herself a pretty nice game as well. She's now got 10 points and seven rebounds. Thompson draws the foul. A little bit of a bailout out there for Georgetown. That was going to be a rush possession. Thompson got it on a cut and just tried to put it up quick. Strong bailed her out on the elbow. I wonder if Thompson was a little further from the hoop than she thought she was when she went up for the shot, but does get a couple from the line. And so a six-point game and important free throws here for Georgetown as Thompson, a 65% free throw shooter, hits the first. They could really use Tatiana Thompson to find her rhythm offensively. She gives them something different from what's on the rest of the roster, a post player who can stretch the floor, who's got nice passing instincts. She could be a difference maker for them in Big East play. Thompson, a junior forward out of Winter Haven, Florida. Not played a ton over the first two seasons here, but getting some fourth quarter minutes here in a close game against Butler. Four point game. It's Torre, nearly threw it away. Parker keeps it, now gets into the lane. A little scoop can't finish, but draws the foul. Parker just so quick. She's playing at a different speed than everybody else right now. Her shiftiness, her ability to change direction in tight spaces. And she's not afraid to come back and use her weaker right hand. Stops on a dime there and then flies back past the Osagi or Essay who missed on the steal attempt. And now she'll get a couple from the free throw line as well here. So a lot of free throws early on here in the fourth quarter. I haven't seen a ton of free throws coming into this fourth quarter. Georgetown was 5 of 6, Butler 9 of 13 coming into the fourth, but both teams a couple opportunities, and Parker hits a couple. And it's back up to a six-point game. 
And another careless turnover here for Georgetown. And, you know, the total number of turnovers for Georgetown has not been outrageous in this game, but there have been a lot of sloppy ones. And Osagi or SC with no pressure on the ball just carried it. I'll be honest, if I was a player around the country, I'd be nervous seeing that carrying call made at half court. You don't see that one too often. <laughs> uh, that's kind of like picking a name out of a hat on who gets penalized for that. It's a six-point game. Butler will get it back. Parker has initiated a lot of the offense here so far in the fourth quarter and now trying to go to the basket. Cut off nicely there. It's strong, tipped away. And Thompson comes up with the loose ball. It's tipped away from behind. I think Barnes got a piece of it there and a good defensive play. She does. She did, and I like Barnes right back here coming back to get the ball. Looked out for a run out in transition. Now she's coming back to get them organized, get the ball moving, hopefully get it back and get her touch. Sandra Gordon, team played well when she was on the floor in the third quarter. Now outside, Barnes, another three-point opportunity. Knocks it down, and Barnes has shot it well from the outside. That's her fourth three-pointer of the game, and it's a three-point game. I really like the unselfish play there from Brianna Jones. Drove it hard in the middle, drew two, and was able to make a pass go into her left hand, giving it up to her teammate who had a better shot. And Barnes, the best scorer on this team, now 16 points for Georgetown. And really, if this team's going to compete with some of the top teams in the Big East, there's a foul drawn here. And actually a charge drawn by Barnes, so a great defensive play there. But if they're going to be able to compete, as you see the replay here, Barnes is going to have to be a big part of it, and she's been all over. The rare delayed charge call from an official. Usually they're a quick trigger on the punch the other way. Barnes continues to play a brilliant second half here for Georgetown. Now up to 16 points, four of six from the outside. She's also got six rebounds in this game. So she's been everywhere here for Georgetown. And they're right in it with just under seven to go and a ball turned over there. A little confusion there. Thompson thought Barnes was going hard back door. Barnes just trying to get herself open on the wing. Butler has led this game since about the nine minute mark of the first quarter. Georgetown has had the ball a couple of times with a chance to either tie it like on that last possession or tie or take the lead earlier in the third quarter. Haven't been able to convert. And so now see what they can do defensively. And a little cut there, tipped away. Ends up in the hands though of Butler. And now Kalova comes away with it. And here's Barnes trying to push here for Georgetown. Barnes, little kick outside. Deep two is banked in by Brianna Jones, and it's a one-point game. And there you see it, it's contagious. Jones gave it up to get Barnes a good look earlier. Now Barnes in transition, finding Jones running the wing. It's funny how the ball starts moving once you start sharing it. Here's Caceres, and Spolier now, the senior leader, trying to get a big bucket, and an offensive foul is gonna be called. So he stuck the elbow out, clear out there, and it's called on Spolier. Georgetown's discipline against Spolier in those situations has really gotten better as the game's gone along. They know the spin is coming, they know she's gonna pivot, and they haven't overcommitted reaching in on the ball. Spolier, four of 18 shooting, 0 of five from outside, and now a turnover here, and Georgetown has it, trailing by just one and trying to take their first lead since very early on in this game. Kalova uh, nearly turned it over, fortunate bounce for Georgetown. Back outside to Jones, still 12 on the shot clock. It's Jones looking to take it herself. Hands it off to Kalova. Kalova banks it in, and Georgetown has their first lead since the nine minute mark of the first quarter. You can see now Butler trying to figure out where they want to go offensively. They've tried to go to Spolio the last couple plays. Georgetown defense has been solid. Here's Let's see if Parker gets involved. Torre, defense converged on her. Parker now has it, shot clock under 10. It's Spolier the senior with five. Gonna have to be Spolier. Little step back three, good. And the senior with a huge time to hit her first three pointer of the game. That's, that's been probably her toughest look from three. A step back, pulling it back to her right hand. Looked like Gordon got caught up on that high ball screen. Spolier's now got 14 in the game, team high. So Georgetown back, trailing by two. Thompson in the corner, cross-court pass. Gordon thought about the three. Instead, a little leaner inside, no good. Bounced around, and Gordon will get it back. And they'll slow it down. Smart play there. So the shot clock reset to 20. 
Barnes now. He's been the key offensive player for Georgetown. Over to Jones. Jones outside to Kalova. Inside Thompson, and another travel is called. And so Georgetown will turn it over here with 4.06 to go in the fourth quarter. Exciting back and forth action, 46 to 44. Butler leading Georgetown, 4.06 to go here in the game. You're watching Butler Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get to Two-point game here, 4.06 to go in the fourth quarter, and tickets are on sale now for the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep. It'll return to Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago, March 6th to the 9th. All session tickets for the 2020 Conference Tournament on sale now starting at $50. For tickets, visit www.bigeast.com backslash WBB tickets. That's bigeast.com backslash WBB tickets. So, Eric, two-point game here as we come down the stretch. Georgetown has played really well here in the second half. Spolier just hit the big three-pointer, though, to put Butler back up in front. What are you looking for here over the final four minutes of this game? Well, you, to be expected, but you've seen the experienced players from each team step up in crucial moments. Players who have been through this before, been through big conference games, whether it's here or in the case of a Taylor Barnes when she was at Memphis. Um, Catherine Strong when she was at VCU. Players that know what it's about when it's a conference play. The type of plays you have to make. Offensive rebounds, extra chances. They're going to get you wins when you're when you're playing teams that know you so well. Saw so Spolier sit down on the bench here, so she's going to get a little breather. Wouldn't imagine she's going to be on that bench very long here. And actually, she is <laughs> still just on the floor. Her legs. She was literally just taking a five-second break there on the bench while they waited for the cheerleaders to clear the floor. So Spolier, the senior leader, is on the floor here for Butler with a two-point lead under four minutes to go here in the final quarter of play. Each of these timeouts in the second half, Butler has tried to freeze Spolier up either off a stagger screen on the baseline or a flash into the high post. Looks like they're going to try to flare her again on the backside. Seen a lot of possessions for Butler with the shot clock winding down. And once again here, it's down to five. It's Torre who's going to try to take it to the basket, tipped away, and it's Tatiana Thompson who ends up with it. And Butler, a good job of getting back on defense, but Georgetown gets it back, trailing by two. 3.30 to go, trying to set up the offense as Taylor Barnes. A little drive there, baseline, and a shot that refs are going to talk about and see which way it's going to go, and it is going to be Butler ball. So tipped away and... Another empty possession for Georgetown. See Whitney Jennings, an assistant coach there for Butler, one of the stars of the team a season ago as Butler lost a couple of their key scorers, which has led to now the senior leader being Spolier, and she, of course, hit the big shot a couple of minutes ago. You know, we watched Whitney Jennings here last year for Butler when they won in McDonough Arena. You can see maybe passing on some of that knowledge now to Spolier, who's in the same situation. Nice kick outside. Parker, the three-pointer, rims out. Big offensive rebound, though, by Strong, and they'll get a fresh 20. Caceres, give it back over to Parker. Caceres playing some important minutes here off the bench at the end of the game. Parker will take another three. That one's no good, and it's Kalova who comes down with it. 
Couple possessions in a row. We haven't really seen Barnes going to the basket. See if she gets involved in this one. So they get it inside to Thompson. Nice little spin move. And a nice move inside by Thompson. Tie game, 46 apiece. That's been coming right there. Butler coming out of the timeout playing zone. Both possessions. Georgetown hasn't been able to hit on a couple of those, but Thompson with a nice move back to her left hand. Here's Strong. She'll try to answer. Shot is blocked by Kalova. Team leader in block shots, Kalova. She's got a couple in this game. And Butler will keep it with 2.12 to go. She does such a good job playing without bodying uh, players up and just using her length, trusting that she'll get her angles right. Well, cut here by Spolier, lost the ball, and a charge is called. And once again, Georgetown drawing a charge. It's Barnes, second time in this fourth quarter. She gets the offensive foul called. I believe Spolier's offensive, or fouls have all come on the offensive end of the floor. Georgetown really just stepping in front of her, knowing she's going to cut once she gives it up. Butler at least is going to push Parker up to keep the ball out of the hands of Barnes. And so Gordon, who checked into the game, brings it up across. So three fouls in the game for Spolier with two minutes to go in a tie game, 46 to 46. Session arrow favoring Butler in this game. It's Barnes inside Thompson trying a little pass there to Kalova. And it went off the foot of Kalova and out of bounds. So trying for the interior passing, and Kalova just couldn't handle a little bit of a low pass. And we said we know Butler's going to drop down on that backside when the ball gets to the high post. Cassandra Gordon, who struggled a little bit with her shooting this year, but she's wide open on the backside. You've got to swing at the one more pass and get her an open look. Parker, a little kick out to Caceres. Now Caceres, a little floater in the leg in the lane misses, and it's Kalova who runs down another defensive rebound. Kalova now 13 rebounds in the game, and Barnes is going to call a timeout here for Georgetown. Georgetown with still two timeouts left after this one, and so we'll keep it here. 30-second timeout, 46 to 46, 123 to go here in this game. Eric, tie ball game. Barnes has been the key here, but they've done some nice work inside as well, which we look for coach to draw up here in this timeout. If they get the right people where they want them, if they can get Taylor Barnes or Brianna Jones on the back side of their offense, they've had success getting the ball to the high post. Initiate to one side, look to get Kalova or Thompson flashing in the high post, and then put your best shooter on the back side. That opportunity is there. We've seen him hit it a couple times in the second half. Kalova, I like Kalova's passing ability at the high post. I'd flash her in from the weak side and tell her to look opposite. Barnes has hit, th has hit four three-pointers in this game. A couple of minutes ago, we saw Thompson with a nice move inside, so some opportunities for them offensively. And on the other side, for Butler, defensively, they've got their starters into this game along with Caceres, but Butler has still played this game pretty strong defensively. It's just Georgetown has hit a few more shots here in the second half. They were able to get the tempo going a little bit more the way they needed it, especially when they were struggling offensively. You just had to find a different rhythm to the game. Butler's missed some chances to maybe stretch the lead when they had the opportunity offensively. And now we see Georgetown up to 37% shooting in this game. Butler has dropped under 30%. They're 28.6% shooting, but Spolier a few moments ago hit a big three-pointer, so they've got some big shot makers and some players who can get offensive rebounds for them as well. Strong has done a nice job on the offensive rebounding in this game, and so we'll see what Georgetown has. Coming out of the timeout here, 123 to go, 46 apiece. Ne Butler's next foul will put Georgetown on the line. And it's Barnes who controls here out of the timeout. Guarded by Parker, it's Gordon into the game. Driving in and lost the handle there and a travel is called. And so Georgetown not able to get a shot up on that possession. Georgetown again in their zone here defensively. They have to hand it off and make sure you know where Spolier is. Strong who gives it over to Spolier the senior being guarded by Barnes. Now Spolier quick to the basket and it looked like she got Thompson there going to the basket. A foul was called on Thompson. We'll take another look here and might have been just a little bit of an arm or elbow to the face there. Clearly accidental but Thompson remains down on the ground here. And they are going to, it looks like they are going to call it a shooting foul. I thought the official initially signaled on the floor, but we're going to see Spolier going to the line for two. 
So tough for Thompson here. She's going to come off the floor. And Georgetown starters are walking over towards their bench. Didn't see either team call a timeout, and now it looks like Kirk Godlewski was asking for a timeout, I believe. Still three timeouts remaining in this game. It's 46 to 46, as you see Thompson there on the bench, and she's been such a key player, and I think the refs are going to take a look to see if maybe it was an elbow and a flagrant foul. I'm not sure what they were. Thompson was the one that committed the foul and mm -hmm. seemed to come out worse on it. I don't know if they can review whether it's a shooting foul in this situation or not. So 46 to 46, 58.4 seconds to go. Take a quick break. Come back. Conclusion of this exciting one between Butler and Georgetown. So Spolier will get two from the line, 46 to 46. They did go to the monitor looking for an elbow, and Spolier a rare miss at the free throw line on the first one. She's an 80% free throw shooter on the season, but misses the first and was three for three in the game. Knocks down the second, and so Butler gets a one-point lead, and a timeout is called here. So, 40, so 47 to 46, Butler leading in this game. Georgetown calling the timeout. So Georgetown has one timeout remaining in this game. Butler still with three timeouts left. And again, the next foul by Butler will put Georgetown on the line. Possession arrow is favoring Butler. But Georgetown, once again, they've had a lot of these possessions coming out of timeouts and a lot of careless turnovers. Saw it on the last one, the travel called on Gordon. But just trying to get some action going to the basket here. And I think the ball has to get in Taylor Barton's hands at some point on this possession. You saw they they didn't go to her on the last one. We don't know how the rest of the play was going to develop, but they need to make sure her or Brianna Jones is involved. And I'm kind of curious to see Georgetown use a timeout there after they had a chance to draw up a play during the review. I think James Howard wanted to call the timeout so he could advance the ball right here, but may want that timeout down the stretch here depending on the game situation. Only one left now. So Barnes with Gordon, Jones, Kalova, and Osagi Aresi checks back into the game here for Georgetown. And a little bit of trouble getting the ball in, and now another timeout is called by James Howard. So that is their final timeout. So they advance the ball and are not able to get it in and call the timeout, another 30-second timeout. And so, so once again, trouble getting the ball in and got to be frustrating to not be to have to call that timeout. It, I really wonder what they were uh, discussing at the last break. They may have been ready for the, a defensive situation during the review. After the made free throw, I actually think it's easier to inbound the ball on the baseline full court. You're able to run the baseline on the make. You keep your timeout in your back pocket. You've had success in the open floor. Now you have to burn another one because it's more difficult than people realize inbounding the ball, side out of bounds, late game. Uh, they needed somebody else. To, Gordon set a screen for Barnes, didn't flash back. We need somebody else besides Barnes to be aware to flash back and get the ball inbounds. So Georgetown now trailing by one at a timeout. So we'll see if that factors into this one. And once again, a little trouble getting it in as Jones does get it. Osagi RSC now will have it at the top of the key. 50 seconds to go in this one. It's Kalova. Barnes has not touched the ball yet on this possession. It's Jones now. Jones will take a little step back free throw jumper. It's no good. Flying in is Osagi Arese. Tried to put it back in, missed the shot, and now a tie up, and it'll be Butler ball. And now a decision for Georgetown here. There's going to be a four second differential. You don't have a timeout left. Do you foul right here, or do you try to play the possession out? And Butler's going to call the timeout now. Here they still have, after this timeout, two foul, two timeouts remaining. Georgetown has a foul to give, so two fouls will put them on the line. But 
you would imagine that, especially because Georgetown has no timeouts or remaining, can advance the ball, that they're probably going to foul extend this game. This is right at the gray area for me. Four second difference. You figure Butler won't run it all the way down to 30, all 30 seconds. Maybe you can shoot with a couple seconds left on the shot clock. But that's a tight one. If you give up an offensive rebound, you're in big trouble. I would say if I'm Georgetown right here, I'm, I'm hard trapping. I know I have a foul to give. I can even take a hard hack at the ball. Maybe I get a call for a foul, but then they got to take it out of bounds again. I think Georgetown won maybe two hard traps, then foul. You have a chance right now to talk about what you want offensively going back the other way. And for Georgetown, a couple of timeouts used on that last possession and not able to come up, and it's back-to-back -back possessions. They had it first 46-46, turnover, and then trailing by one, and really never got a great shot up on either of those possessions. Butler will inbound. Here's Parker. Georgetown playing back at least for now defensively. So a hold on about a four-second difference between the game and shot clock, and Butler will be content to let it wind down. It's Parker with the ball in her hand. She is a 61% free throw shooter on the season is Parker. Now 10 to go. It's Torre at the top of the key. Torre back to Parker. Parker now with three. Here's Torre, will take the deep three, rattles out. Caleva has it. Georgetown's gonna have to heave it up and the game clock expires. And that is how this one will come to an end. So Georgetown elects to play it out. They got the stop, but then just not ready to push it. And Georgetown falls in this game by one. That's a tough way to end it right there. Butler did a good job. Even though they didn't get the best look, they got it all the way down. They shot it with one seconds on the clock. So Butler holds on to beat Georgetown 47 to 46. We'll have much more here from McDonough Arena as a one point win for the Bulldogs. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. And welcome back here at McDonough Arena. A one-point win for the Butler Bulldogs. Kirk Gudlowski here with us courtside after his team holds on to the victory. Coach, what are you thinking there those final couple of seconds as the game clock ticks down? Uh, Got to trust your seniors. Uh, defensively, over this three-game span, that's what our, our bread and butter has been. Um, we've got some stuff that we've got to obviously improve on, but very proud of my kids. You know, the three three road wins in this in this league is very difficult to do. Yeah, you start off the season 0-2, two home losses there in conference play to begin things, but have you guys kind of fixed things here over the last three games? Well, I think our understanding of how, how to play has really grown. Um, obviously, we've got to go back home, and we've got to work on some of our zone offensive stuff and our ball movement there, but... Uh, very pleased with our effort overall and our buy-in from our kids defensively. That's two games in a row where, where we've held an opponent in the 40s, and that's huge. Great defense. And then on the other side, the senior, Kristen Spolier, didn't have her best shooting game no. in this one. Obviously, she'll have better offensive days, but how about the two, the big three-pointer that she hit there in the fourth quarter? It, it, she's got what great shooters, all great shooters have, and that's short-term memory loss. And she, uh, you know, she, she wants the ball in those situations. She wanted the ball here down the stretch. So she hits that, makes uh, makes that free throw to get us the win and, uh, you know, battle for that rebound, which was great. Well, Coach, congratulations on the victory here. Three straight wins for your Butler team, a one-point victory here against Georgetown. You'll head back home here for a couple of games. So congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. Appreciate Kirk Kodlewski you. here, courtside here as the Butler Bulldogs get a 47-46 to victory. A couple of key baskets down the stretch. It was Christian's, Kristen Spolier who gets the big three-pointer to – 
give Georgetown, or rather give Butler the lead late and then hold on to a one-point victory. 47-46, to the final score here at McDonough Arena. Butler holds on to beat Georgetown.